Excellent. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining the session today. Uh, I saw the poll going around this morning in my first uh, Geo Awesomeness session as well today. So uh, shout out to all the other first time uh, attendees. I'd like to thank the team here awesome at Geo Awesomeness uh, for providing the opportunity to speak with everyone here today. Uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about bringing spatial data together uh, to provide insight and clarity to support digital transformation and how we're doing that here at CZM. My name is Dave Bragg, and I am the Smart Construction Project Manager here at Cesium. As many of you may be aware, Cesium is a visualization platform for 3D geospatial data. The Cesium platform spans open source components, uh, support for and providing open standards for data sharing, as well as Cesium Ion, which is our SaaS on-prem filing and visualization solution. Cesium started way back in 2011 at Analytical Graphics, and this past June, we celebrated our one-year anniversary of Cesium as its own company. For myself, I joined Cesium in April of this year to help support the smart construction development and production planning. I've been working in the geospatial industry for over 22 years, and I've witnessed the explosion of data, technology, awareness, and adoption of geospatial, as many of the attendees here, I believe, have also witnessed. Over my career, I spent time collecting and processing data, so photogrammetry and feature collection from imagery. I've developed applications and GIS solutions for a wide range of customers from state and local governments to federal and private industry. And really coming out of the GIS space, which I believe most of us have, we're all about data layers and transforming the real world into a digital version. So building data so that we can use that data to inform decision making. Today we're talking a little bit about digital transformation within a geospatial context and really to me, bringing together people and the data to provide answers is really the heart of digital transformation. In the geospatial industry, many of, us, many of us have experienced what happens when you gather people around the map, whether it's a printed map, a digital 2D or a 3D map, people start to invariably ask questions. Where is this compared to? How far, how far is this from my house? Uh, where did this, what did this look like before? It's not just about viewing the data, but being able to perform analysis across the data sets to derive answers. The number and types of data available are increasing year over year. And some of this data is massive and has a high frequency of updating. Finally, the tech though is catching up with up to the demand of the data. The challenge really is being able to support these larger and larger data sets efficiently, while also being able to adapt to new updates and new data sources. And this is really where Cesium comes into play. You can think of us more of like a, a gaming engine for the real world with data fusion for different data types. Uh, Unity for geospatial, the next gen Google Earth, or more, and kind of where I am at is a digital light table we can gather around to ask and answer questions in a geospatial context. Cesium provides SaaS and on-prem subscriptions for 3D geospatial content that we curate, such as our global train data set, as well as our OSM buildings, as well as pipeline tools to optimize users' data for 3D streaming, just like YouTube optimizes raw video for streaming. We pair this with open source graphics and engines, and an API custom written for the performance and precision requirements of 3D that runs in a web browser or any device. Uh, and we, we look for industry leading partners like our friends at Komatsu to partner with and help build solutions alongside with and transform and inform users with geospatial data. Well, what kind of data we're we talking about? And some of this we'll all should be very familiar with. Terrain and imagery, it's really the first stop when we're looking at some of this data whether this is captured from satellite aircraft and more and more via UAS or drones. These photogrammetric sources provide the images and can be processed into terrain data sources, as well as detailed 3D scenes. And these 3D scenes can provide a foundation for building a digital twin with inside of an application. Another data source we can pull into the platform are 3D models. Back into the GIS world, I can create a building a feature and have attributes associated with it. Um, these models provide more details with attribution and styling captured at the building level. Uh, the details can be as simple as the image in the lower left shows, or it can be extremely complex with, with high rooftop detail. Again, the key is depending on the type of questions we expect to ask of the data, making sure the data is, has the appropriate resolution for what we want to do with it. At a larger scale, we have point cloud data derived from terrestrial, airborne, or vehicle-based sensors, or as a byproduct of some of our photogrammetric processing. Point clouds and LIDAR have been available for a long time, but only now are we really being able to start to manage these large data sets efficiently 
enough to incorporate them into visualization and analysis. And we can go inside of buildings now with BIM and CAD models. So again, incorporating a true digital twin of buildings and infrastructures uh, to support those buildings with inside of um, a, viewing, a viewing application like Cesium. More specifically, we can apply these concepts to industry solutions like Earthworks as we've, we've been doing with our Komatsu partners. As we will see with some of our other presenters today, there are several different data sources available that can be integrated into a common dashboard, including pre-construction design files, so our XML and DXF designs of the site, survey and ortho photos from UAS and drone collections, as well as as-built information from construction vehicles. Each of these data sources have different formats, file sizes, and update frequencies. Design files might only be a couple times over the course of a project. UAS collections could be weekly or monthly, and as-built information could be daily or even some cases hourly. All this information needs to be processed, displayed, and made available to make timely decisions on progress and planning activities. Moving us towards being able to ask questions of the data I have available is really the heart of digital transformation. But to get there, we still have hurdles to overcome. What does it really take moving towards digital transformation? You know, having all of this data, accessibility to data, the imagery, the GPS, the LiDAR data, it's amazing, but the real power with all the data sources is in making it valuable to the users. From the most mundane tasks to the most complicated workflows, if you cannot help or at least meet the current workflows, it doesn't matter how fancy the data or the solution is. In the construction space, this paradigm is front and center. We have a lot of late adopters. They have decades of experience using the workflows and tools to complete their task. They have paper maps over digital project, products, tried and trusted solutions over innovation and cutting edge technology. And we also have to be aware of the natural resistance to change. It's hard to let go and that's true for any of us. Ultimately, we have to build trust in the data and the applications that use that data. We must show the value of the data and how it can help on a day-to-day -day basis. If the first step in a process is to take a new technology and immediately compare it to what I had before, if we don't at least meet that benchmark, then the new technology is not gonna take off. So how do we do this? For example, we can start looking at basic measurements, like the comparison of a design surface to the pre-construction topography on the ground using UAS collected survey data Combining the XML DXF files with the, UA, with the UAS collected survey data, we can really begin to understand the quantity of amount of work, the quantity of the amount of work ahead. We can perform basic measurements like cut and fill, area measurements, and 3D cross sections. And as new data is collected, we can compare this new information where we are now against the design where we want to be to inform decisions to improve the overall performance of the project. As site as the site progresses, the 3D data can be used to determine cut and fill locations and volumes to help balance the site. Pulling together the latest UAS collects, I can, bring, I can begin to compare my progress in real time at the site level or individual work areas within the site of the site. Now cut and fill is altogether not a new technology. It's been around and we've seen it a lot, but being able to perform the measurements with site data updated on a regular basis in a 3D environment that is also accessible to a wide range of users from on-site personnel to back office project managers is really the start of digital transformation. As another example, I could use the 3D data to perform stockpile measurements. Again, not inherently new, but in many cases, this is still performed manually on-site, requiring surveyors to visit the site and perform traditional surveys, which take time to capture and generate results from. Also having the surveyors on site can introduce safety hazards as they walk around the site performing the survey. I can begin to mitigate the risk and reduce the turnaround time with a simplified digital approach. And I can continue to evolve my understanding of my project site as more data is collected and integrated with my previous data. So it becomes a living representation of my project site. The ability to incorporate frequent updates daily or even hourly as built information from GPS enabled construction vehicles provides a complete up-to-date digital twin of the earthwork site. The ability to consume and display the varying types of data and formats um, offers insight into the overall progress of the site. 
I can help determine project changes or areas falling behind or areas where I need to reposition my resources. The granularity and frequency of the as built information provides a level of detail greater than the site wide approaches we had just looked at. So, where are we going next with all of this? Uh, we continue to look for new ways to make this vast amounts of 3D data accessible to support decision makers. Our background in cesium and gaming technology naturally leads us towards bringing this data into augmented and virtual reality solutions like Halo and the Oculus systems. Whether this might be viewing cut and fill measurements real time on site or measuring the stockpile locations via my handheld. Nowadays, that's not too far off with the LiDAR sensors that are now available in the most recent iPhones. VR can allow project managers to view current site conditions from the office or another part of the globe. And we're starting to look at AI and machine learning to help identification and automated classification of features with inside the imagery and 3D terrain sources that we routinely ingest for our construction sites. And as our presenters will discuss here shortly, UAS and drones are a valuable tool for site collection. What if you could task or plan missions automatically around areas based on the progress status identified with inside of another system? The data is available. There's no shortage of questions we want to ask. Bringing the two of these together is the heart of digital transformation and where Cesium is trying to play a leading role in the industry. See. With that, I'd just like to thank you for your time today. And I think I've left enough time here for, for some questions. Um, and uh, welcome any questions you might have.